Hello everyone, welcome to Botany Option channel for the UPSC examination. In today's video, we are going to see the topic called Chemo Taxonomy. As the name suggests, this is related with the taxonomy and we are using the chemicals for the taxonomy. This has been given in your UPSC Botany Optional Syllabus for the Mains Examination and in particular this topic is very important because in many examinations including the UPSC Mains Examination, this topic is often asked for certain marks. Now, now I intentionally showing these photographs on the slide because you should generally have the idea that each particular plant have their different chemical composition. Now every plant has a different chemical composition we can observe it externally as well. You can find the flowers of different plants which are of different colors. So they are made up of the different phytochemical pigments and that is why they are showing the different colors. So we can use these chemicals in a taxonomy to classify the plants. All right. So that is why the chemo taxonomy is very emerging science in a plant kingdom because as we come to know about the phytochemicals from the plant kingdom we, we are using the knowledge of those phytochemicals to classify the plants before starting the video i would like to request you to join the telegram channel i am giving the link of this telegram channel in the description box so please check it and join the telegram channel with the same name that is the botany optional for ups examination so let's start the video so friend, this is a uh, third unit of paper 1 in your botany of syllabus. Here we have the chemo taxonomy. That is in a taxonomy hierarchy, here we have the chemo taxonomy and we should study this chemo taxonomy in very detail. Alright. Now first of all, what is chemo taxonomy? This word chemo taxonomy is made up of two words. That is first is the chemo and second is the taxonomy. Now as you know, chemo stands for the chemical that is various chemicals present in the plants and taxonomy stands for classification of the plants right in taxonomy in general we classify the living organism so chemotaxonomy is nothing but the classification of our organism by using the chemicals in this case we are using the phytochemicals that is the plants that is the chemicals from the plants so we are using the phytochemicals to classify the plant groups all right so Classifying the plant groups depending upon the chemical composition they contain, we call that thing as a chemo taxonomy. Now, we have very current systems of classification depending upon the morphology of the plants, their reproduction, their structure of leaves, structure of how they grow or what is their habitat. Depending upon many things, we have already classified these plants. But in a recent times, the knowledge about the phytochemicals has grown very high. Now, by now, scientists now believe that by using these phytochemicals, we can classify the plants so that we can accurately combine the plant those which have the same phylogeny, right? That is, those are plants which belong, which have a evolutionary connection between them will show the same chemical composition, right? Because as you know, all things are started from the genomes, that is from the genes, and from the genes. From the expression of these genes, we have various types of chemicals that is the proteins, secondary metabolites and many more, right? So all these chemical compounds are coming from the genetic makeup of the plant. So if two plants say have this similar chemical composition, then those two plants must be genetically linked. So the phylogeny of those two plants will be matching. So in this way, by using the chemo taxonomy, we can classify the plants accurately, not by judging their morphological characters only. We are using the genetic characters to relate the plants so that we can take those plants under the particular family, right? So it is a very huge application that chemo taxonomy can take us to the phylogeny of every living plant. From this scenario, many plants are showing the particular biochemical pathways that are not found in other plants. That is, some pathways are present in a certain certain plants only and these pathways produce the very particular set of chemical compounds. And many chemical compounds are example of this like the alkaloids, then we have flavonoids, terpenoids and all these chemical compounds are found different in a different plants because they have the different pathways for the production of these chemical compounds. But there are certain chemicals like proteins, 
are very similar in a plant kingdom that is proteins like carbohydrates all these chemicals are nearly found similar in a plant kingdom but there are on the other hand there are certain types of chemical compounds which are very particular to the some particular family or say some particular plants only they are restricted to certain plants only that is they are endemic in a certain groups of plants so depending upon these endemic chemicals we can classify the plants and we can relate the closely genetically related plants all together in a one family or say one group right so these chemical compounds plays a very important role in a chemo taxonomy so these chemical compounds which are produced by the plants can directly be used in the taxonomy and we call this science as a chemo taxonomy all right so there are already previous attempt to classify the plant kingdom depending upon the chemicals and we are going to see the two point of view which are first given by the Nike in 1984 in which he said the chemi the plant kingdom can be divided by using the chemicals on in a three groups the very first group is chemicals visible directly that is those chemicals can be visible directly by the naked eyes then there is a second category of chemicals that is chemical showing the specific chemical test and the third is the protein so according to nike we can classify the plants by using these three categories of the chemicals now in a chemicals visible directly we have silica then starch grains right those are chemicals which shows the specific test we have alkaloids and flavonoids and many other right and the and later we have proteins which are made up of the 20 amino acid so depending upon these proteins we can also classify the plants then there is a second type of classification given by the jones and the lutzinger in 1987 in which they classify the biochemical molecules into micromolecules and the macromolecules in a micromolecules we have those chemicals which have low molecular weight all right so those chemicals which have low molecular weight comes under the micromolecules and those are chemicals which have very high molecular weight are comes under the micromolecules so the biochemicals divided by the jones and the lutz singer in 1987 is the macromolecules which have the low molecular weight and the micromolecules which have the high molecular weight and depending upon this they suggest we should classify the plants now let us study an example for the chemo taxonomy as you know flavonoids are the very important secondary metabolites found in the plant kingdom and they are nearly found in a almost all the plant groups generally they, they contain the two benzene rings and a three carbon containing uh, unit attached to that two benzene ring but these uh, flavonoids also shows some specific distribution in specific plant families now this distribution which is very specific to some specific plant families makes flavonoids a unique secondary metabolite on which we can classify the plants there are some major categories of the flavonoids but two of them are shown on this slide one is the anthocyanidin and the other is the betanins now these anthocyanidins are the colored pigments of flower that is the colored pigments of the flowers whenever you see the colorful flowers these colorful pigments are likely to contain the anthocyanidins right so these anthocyanidins are the colored pigments which are present in the flower and some little leaves as well so basically the anthocyanidins are the chemical compounds which gives color to the flower and as you know in a first slide we have seen the many different types of different colored flowers these anthocyanidins are mostly red or blue that is red and blue flowers are almost all belong to the anthocyanidins while on the other hand yellow color flower have anthocyanins the pigment which will be responsible for yellow color is the anthocyanin while the red and blue color chemical pigment belongs to the anthocyanins right but in a certain cases now this is very important you should listen this very carefully now anthocyanins in a certain cases remains absent in some plant species now the absence of anthocyanins is directly linked with the presence of the betanins that is if 
the anthocyanidins were absent in a plant, then there is a likely the chances of presence of betanins in that plant. State of anthocyanidins. All right. Now these betanins are the phenolic compounds and they have nitrogen in their structure. So betanins is nothing but the phenolic uh, phenol-like compounds with their nitrogen in their structure. Now these betanins are very significant in the taxonomy because these betanins are found in the seven families out of the ten families of karyophyllals. That is the order karyophyllals has a ten families and out of the ten families the seven families contains the betanins and rest the three families do not contain the betanins. Now, depending upon the presence or absence of betanins, these families can be classified, right? Now, these are three families which lacks the betanins are Gyrae, Stemonaceae, the second family, Caryophyllaceae, and the third family, Molugenaceae. So, these are three families in particular lack the betanins, but rest of the several families has the presence of betanins. So, this is the very crucial point that wherever there is a absence of betanins, we can use this particular treat to classify the plants under the karyophyllals by using the chemical compounds, right? Now, by using this knowledge, now by using this knowledge, now by using this knowledge, there is a strong view that karyophyllals should have two groups that is one containing the betanins and other which has the absence of betanins that is we should classify the remaining three into the different order and the seven under the karyophyllals that is we should intentionally exclude these three families from the karyophyllals because they have different chemical composition that is they have absence of betanins while these are seven which has the presence of betanins should remain under the karyophyllals. So, this is how we are using the flavonoids to classify the plants that is the chemotaxonomy, classification of plants by using the chemicals. So, you should carefully remember this example to put in your answer so that examiner should give you the 100% marks because whenever you write about the chemotaxonomy, you should Always be mentioned the June 9 example that how the chemicals are used to classify the plants. So, this example is very important and you should carefully remember it. And I will strongly request you to note down these examples while you are watching this video. Please note it down in your notebook so that you will remember it for forever. Alright. So, let's think about some other chemical compounds which can be again used for the chemo, chemo taxonomy. Alright. Now, there are certain alkaloids which are also specific to some specific plants. That is the nicotine. This is an alkaloid chemical compound found in the nicotina plant. Then there is a Q9 which is found in the chinsona plant. Then ephedrine found in the ephedra plant. Morphine, this alkaloid is found in a op opium poppy. So, different plants has a different chemicals which are present only in them so that we can use the, all these chemicals to classify them efficiently. Then we have terpenoids. Here is the example of terpenoid camphor, which is found in a cinnamomus plant. Then menthol found in the mentha plant. Now these chemical compounds are not found in a other plant groups. So these plant chemicals can also be used for the classification of plant kingdom. So this is how all the chemical compounds that may belong to terpenoid, alkaloid, or flavonoids can be used to particularly make the specific position of that plant in a particular group right so by using these chemical compounds which are specific to that plants only we can use these specific chemicals to classify the plants that is in the science of chemotaxonomy all right so i hope you like this lecture please like the video give comment if you have any question please share this video with your friends who are studying the botany subject and please subscribe to the botany optional channel for the upsc examination again thank you very much for watching this video see you in the next one